Ladies and gentlemen, another day, another story. This one coming from a more legal standpoint. Everyone remembers the uh, Epic versus Apple lawsuit, right? The one that started with Fortnite being taken off of the iOS app store. Well, the judge has finally come to a decision that some are calling a win for both sides and others are calling an enormous loss for gamers. For those who don't know, Epic Games filed a lawsuit in California against Apple, challenging Apple's restrictions on in-app purchasing methods outside of the one offered by the App Store, in addition to the 30% revenue cut that Apple receives upon each purchase within the App Store. I shouldn't need to tell you that that's a lot of money. Basically, Epic wanted to sell V-Bucks to its mobile players outside of the App Store. Console players have already enjoyed this luxury for some time, but... Apple's taking 30% of all revenue made this impractical for mobile players. We're not here today to talk about that practice. But the point is that Epic CEO Tim Sweeney's been saying since 2015 that such a revenue cut is too high. It's one of the reasons why the Epic Games Store launched only taking a 12% cut from developers. Epic asserted that the App Store allowed Apple to have a monopoly on the market while Apple asserted that the App Store and the app review process by extension helps confirm quality assurance and security. One of the biggest points in Epic's favor was the fact that Apple's App Store is obscenely profitable. The service costs Apple around $100 million to maintain, but earnings are estimated to have been over $64 billion in 2020. Billion. And that's only an estimate. Fortnite being, well... Fortnite, Epic wanted either a greater cut of the revenue, if not to eliminate Apple altogether. So on August 13th, 2020, they intentionally changed transaction methods within the iOS app, leading to Apple removing Fortnite from the app store, citing breach of agreement, and thus Epic called in the suits. The same scenario happened with Google as a result of the Google Play app on Android, but that case is still ongoing. This course of action was planned well ahead of August 2020. Within the company, this operation was codenamed Project Liberty, with the hashtag FreeFortnite part of a media blitz for players to rally behind. Some people thought it was a brilliant PR move. Others saw it as exploiting the Fortnite audience and trying to weaponize public sentiment against Apple in less than honest ways, as Epic positioned themselves as an oppressed company fighting for the people, when they're also a multi-billion dollar corporation. At the risk of stating the obvious, this is one of the most important cage matches in big tech we've ever seen, as this could very well set a precedent for mobile gaming, as well as monetization of apps in general. Well, last week it was ruled that Apple's takedown of the app was indeed lawful. In fact, on September 10th of this year, the United States District Court for the Northern District of California ruled in favor of Apple in nine out of the 10 charges. The one victory for Epic being Epic's assertion that Apple's actions were in violation of the Golden State's unfair competition law. As a result of that ruling, Apple can no longer stop developers from informing would-be downloaders about other payment systems within an app. So if a developer wants to make their in-app purchases available outside of the App Store to avoid the 30% fee, such as directing a player to their website, for example, Apple can no longer prevent them from doing so. Epic tried to sue Apple under Sherman antitrust laws, but ultimately the biggest win here for Apple was that they avoided being declared a monopoly. And though there were some components of the operation that were considered anti-competitive, the court suggested that no further interference was necessary after a proposed remedy was applied. Epic, for their part, has to pay 30% of the 12 million plus in revenue that Fortnite generated on iOS from August to October 2020, in addition to 30% of the revenue collected after November 1st, 2020, up to the date of the ruling on September 10th, 2021. The judge's ruling goes into effect 90 days after September 10th. Epic has already filed an appeal to the case, but more than anything else, this just raises even more questions about antitrust legislation in the digital age. The presiding judge stated repeatedly in her 185-page ruling that she was concerned by several of Apple's business practices and that she was not persuaded by several of Epic's arguments. It remains to be seen what exactly this will mean for our industry going forward, but we've already seen Fortnite mobile pros and creators clearly unhappy about the results, as it seems unlikely that Fortnite returns to the App Store anytime soon. 
CEO of Epic Games, Tim Sweeney, took to Twitter to say that the ruling isn't a win for developers or consumers, claiming that Epic is fighting for fair competition among in-app payment methods and app stores for a billion customers. He then added that Fortnite will be returning to the app store and that he was grateful to those who fought on his side and even the court itself. Many have taken this with a grain of salt as, of course, Epic didn't go up against Apple solely out of the kindness of their own hearts. Fortnite mobile creator Ducky, in particular, appeared angered by the entire process, responding to Tim, calling the entire affair absolutely disgusting, followed by another tweet to his audience, later bemoaning what he sees as the death of his Fortnite mobile career. What do you think it means? As always, sound off in the comments section down below. We want to know what you think. And until next time, be safe and be good to each other.